Hello! My birthday was September 2nd, so to celebrate, I've decided to upload episodes from my mindfulness podcast series, Reading with Carrie, every day through the month of September. Once we hit October, I'll be posting the episodes every Friday with the bonus minisodes on Saturday. To catch the episodes as they air every Wednesday, you can subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click the link in the description below to go directly to my podcast's website. Hope you enjoy! Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Fable, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. Today's story is one that I admittedly forget about all the time. It's short, kind of gross, but sweet. It's funny to consider how talking animals are treated in these stories. Kuzma decides to trust the fox, and she doesn't deceive him, but the wolf does what predators do, and well, once again, your actions have consequences, don't they? Let's do another fun exercise today. Since this story is full of descriptors, you will need one item. It can be anything, a pencil, your phone. Um, It's easiest if you use a food item. However, if food is a trigger for you, it is not required in any way. Now first, we are going to start with a brief breathing exercise. Close your eyes and breathe deeply with pauses. Once you fully inhale, and a pause after you fully exhale. Center yourself on the here and now. Focus on the breath passing through the heart. Place your feet on the floor or whatever surface you're sitting on and feel them. Feel grounded. Sink deeper into the chair or the bed or the floor. Relax your shoulders as you breathe in deeply and naturally and exhale. Now open your eyes and pick up your object, a pen, an orange, whatever you have available. Pay attention and look at it. Really describe it to yourself. What color is it? What's the hue? Is it pastel? Is it deep? Is it rich? What's the texture like? Are there dimples? Is it rough and coarse? Is there moisture? Or is it hard and smooth? Truly focus on this object. Feel the texture with your fingers. Feel every part if you can. Consider the coloring and now sniff it. Does it have a scent? Is it sweet? Is it sour? If it's a pen, maybe it smells like your sweat. Or perhaps it smells like linen, fresh laundry. Maybe it doesn't have a smell. What does the room smell like that you're in right now? Sometimes the item can create a sound. Tap gently on it with your fingertips. Pretend you're in an ASMR video and try to make noise with it. If it's a pen or a pencil, maybe lightly draw with it. Just focus on the sound that it makes. You don't have to write a word. Now, if you can, 
let the taste hit your tongue. If you can eat it, if it's food, go ahead and bite into it and let the flavor dance on your tongue. If you don't have a food item, you can also taste the air if there's nothing around. Stick your tongue out really wide and wag it in the air or breathe in deeply. Can you taste anything on the air? If it's not food and you think it's hygienic enough, you could lick the item if you'd like. Might be a little silly. Just imagine what it would taste like if you could. If it's a pencil, imagine what the wood would feel like against your teeth. Or the ink, if it's a pen, would probably taste a bit sour. Again, you don't have to lick your phone. Remember to be safe and healthy. Just imagine it if you can't eat it. Just take a few more minutes. When you're doing this exercise on your own, you should take maybe five minutes, eight minutes, probably no more than 10 minutes. It shouldn't take that long. Just focus on the feeling, the touching, what it looks like, what it smells like, and if possible, what it tastes like or what you imagine it would taste like. Really focus. Okay. Did you go through all the senses with me? That I think we've done it. Congratulations. If you would like, let's take a nice, slow sigh. <sighs> and now for the story. Little Red Riding Hood by Charles Perrault. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who was as pretty as could be. Her mother and her grandmother loved her very much. Her grandmother made her a red hood, and it looked so becoming on the little girl that everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother baked a batch of cookies. Red Riding Hood, she said, Mother is sick. Will you take her these cookies and a pot of fresh butter? Red Riding Hood set out at once. Her grandmother lived in the next village, beyond the woods. As she was going through the woods, she met a wolf. The wolf would have liked to eat her, but he didn't dare, because there were woodsmen working nearby. He thought of a plan. Where are you going, my dear? asked the wolf. To see my grandmother, said Red Riding Hood. I have cookies and a pot of fresh butter for her. Have you far to go? asked the wolf. Yes, said Red Riding Hood. Her house is way over there, the first one past the woods. I'll go see her too, said the wolf. I'll take this path, and you take the other path. We'll see who gets there first. The wolf ran fast, and he took a shortcut. Red Riding Hood took the long way. She picked some flowers, she sang some songs, she chased some butterflies. The wolf came to the grandmother's door, while Red Riding Hood was still far away. He knocked twice. Who's there? called Grandmother. It's Red Riding Hood, said the wolf in a Red Riding Hood voice. I've brought you some cookies and a pot of fresh butter. Grandmother was in bed, for she was sick. Open the door and come in, she called. The wolf came in. He hadn't eaten for three days, and he was very hungry. He ate the grandmother very quickly. Then he wrapped himself in Grandmother's shawl. He climbed into Grandmother's bed. Soon, Red Riding Hood came knocking at the door. Who's there? called the wolf in a grandmotherly voice. He sounded hoarse, but Red Riding Hood thought that Grandmother must have had a bad cold. It's Red Riding Hood, she said. I've brought you some cookies and a pot of fresh butter. Open the door and come in, said the wolf, as sweetly as he could. The wolf pulled the covers up to his ears. Put your basket on the table and come here to me, said the wolf. Red Riding Hood came closer. She said, Grandmother, what long arms you have. The better to hug you with, my dear, said the wolf. She said, Grandmother, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. She said, Grandmother, what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear, said the wolf. She said, Grandmother, 
What big teeth you have. The better to eat you with, said the wolf. And eat her he did. But he howled so loud in his true wolf voice that a woodsman heard him. The woodsman ran in with his axe. He hacked hard at the wolf, and the wolf split right down the middle. Out hopped Red Riding Hood, as good as new. Out stepped her grandmother, looking surprised. They put the wolf in the garbage, and that was the end of him. Then they invited the woodsman to sit down. There was plenty of buttered cookies for the three of them. They had a very good time. The end. Let me be frank for a moment. So I says, so I says. <laughs> Sorry, an old dad joke. Be frank, get it? No, what I really meant was that I had to Google what the moral of the story was. I mean, in this story, the main protagonist obeyed her mother and went to visit her grandmother. The only thing she did wrong was taking her time and enjoying the journey, which isn't that what we're supposed to do? Apparently, the moral is to not talk to strangers. I mean, yeah, for a child, I can see that. But she didn't really engage with the wolf, did she? He asked her where she was going, and she told him, but she didn't give out the address. The wolf just somehow knew how to get there. As an adult, it would be considered rude not to make small talk with someone you're in close proximity with. Now, I found a very entertaining article that walks us through not only the story, but of Peralt's history as well. This is a long website link, but I invite you to go read it. So it's www.tor.com slash 2017 slash 02 slash 02 slash fairy dash tales dash little dash red dash writing dash hood. In it, they disagree with my original statement that Red was supposed to go directly to her grandmother's house, but she disobeyed, getting distracted with the scenery and such. The article also mentions a bold claim based on a different translation of the story that it's actually about the dangers of seduction. This is due to the wolf grandmother inviting Red into her bed and Red taking off her clothes before joining her. I don't want to think about that scenario, much less break it down into a teachable moment, so we'll just move on. Instead, I want to interpret this story, as is my right as the host of this podcast, for my own means. Let's instead note that Red obeyed her mother to go check in on her ill grandmother. That shows obedience and compassion. On the way there, she noticed her surroundings, picking flowers and chasing butterflies. I would say she's practicing mindfulness on this walk. She gets to her grandmother's house and again practices mindfulness by focusing on the details of the fake grandmother. Which, can I just say, would be extremely rude if that were just what her grandmother looked like? Why would you tell someone, dude, your arms are super long? Perhaps this is a tale about manners, because had Red not been so blunt, she wouldn't have set up the wolf's punchline so spectacularly. Anyway, I digress. Into his tummy she goes, and out she pops back out, and then she sits down to enjoy some bartered cookies with her grandmother and the woodsman. All in all, a pretty nice day. I think we too should allow ourselves a nice day. Take some time for self-love or self-care, whichever hashtag you prefer to use. Self-compassion is so important for our mental health. So for our closing thoughts, let me provide you with a list of some ideas you can do to practice self-care. Take a long, warm bath. Make it a good one. It's not about hygiene. It's about pampering yourself. Get all the senses involved by lighting a candle or getting some essential oils burning. Listen to soothing music or perhaps a podcast, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Really enjoy the moment and the sensation of sort of floating. Stretch, but like really. Don't just pull your leg up for five seconds and call it good. Really take your time with every part of your body. There's a technique my acting teacher used to have us do, where you go down your body from your head to your toes, and each body part you would tense while you slowly breathed in, hold your breath while you're holding that body part tense, and then release the tension as you let out your breath. We would lay on the floor to do this, but you can lay in bed or just sit in a chair, but make sure your full weight is being supported. By the end, you'll kind of feel like you just had a massage. It is such a great feeling and it really loosens up your body, which is probably why we use it in our acting class. Mini dance party. So if you don't like the slow, quiet times, you can mix it up. 
put on some happy music that's easy to dance to and get to it. Or maybe you can find some music videos or popular TikToks and dance with them. That'll for sure get you laughing, because who knows how to follow those things. <laughs> Take a walk. It's a very popular activity to practice mindfulness and to just enjoy some silence. You can even find a bench or somewhere to just be and embrace the quiet. That's a two-in-one idea for you. Tasty treat. Now, if food is not a trigger for you, it's a fun way to feel a little pampered by getting a piece of dessert or whatever your favorite snack food is and indulging a little without judgment. Allow yourself to enjoy that food and practice the five senses technique on it to get some mindfulness exercise in while you're at it. Finally, this one will be super hard as I myself struggle with it, but get into a better sleep habit. Figure out how much sleep your body actually needs. Some people only need six hours. Some people need more like nine or even 10 hours. If you're getting less than six hours regularly, I would seriously check in with your body to make sure that's not causing any issues. Maybe even speak with a doctor to make sure you're good with that. No judgment, just a little concerned based on the scientific fact that your brain needs time to clean itself up and recharge. But it helps to get into a small tradition before bed. Maybe work in your skincare routine or some self-care to help relax the body and get into a routine that you can do long term. There's also that breathing technique, the 478, where you breathe in for a count of four, you hold your breath for seven counts, and then you exhale with a verbal sound on a count of eight. And if you do about four cycles of this, don't do any more than four because you will get dizzy. Um, but if you do about four, you know, between two to four cycles of this, it's supposed to really help calm you down and it's supposed to be a good natural sleep aid for you. So it's a really, really quick, less than a minute thing to get you ready to sleep. So if you need to be up at 7 a.m. for work or school every day and you know you need nine hours of sleep to feel fully rested, then you logically need to be in bed by 10 p.m. That might sound like a punishment, but your body and mind will thank you for it truly. Now that I've given you enough to consider, thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story. Title, Little Red Riding Hood. Author, Charles Perrault. Version, The Golden Book of Fairy Tales. Translated by Marie Ponsot. And illustrated by Adrian Seguer.